Good morning, everybody. Hope you're really well today. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind typing in and just letting us know that you can hear us, that would be great. And you can type in on your chat bar just to let us know that you're hearing us loud and clear. Exactly. And of course, we've got our our beautiful lady handling money across the uh, dashboard, uh, uh, representing the profitable Solana. We all love to fan money. And I think her expression is really indicative of today's webinar. Don't you think, Ab Catherine? Absolutely. Does she not look happy? She does. You know, and every time we pull up that website, there she is smiling Smiling at away us. at us. With money with, in her hands. With money in her hands. And, and wouldn't it be nice is that every single day, we rolled out of bed with that expression on our face and that roll of money in our hands. <laughs> well, we can visualize it, can't we? we? Can we'll talk about it as we go it. along. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. So here we are, the two blondes in our lovely summer outfit, sitting on a summer patio somewhere and sipping a chilled glass of wine. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I do love that. <laughs> Anyways, welcome everybody to uh, today's webinar. Today we are talking about attitude and attitude is everything. That it is. So one of the first things we're going to do is ask you to check your attitude at the door. So basically, what kind of attitude did you bring to this webinar? Exactly. You know, it's really funny. One of the things that uh, you and I uh, teach in our in salon classes is is really exactly that a check your attitude at the door when you arrive at work all of a sudden now you have to step into your professional mode and leave all your personal baggage behind because totally. when we wear our personal trappings um, it changes our attitude at work and it changes the response of everyone around you from your fellow employees but in particular to your clients well, and the big thing is we bring our energy with us. And the first thing people feel before we even speak, they can feel the energy that we are giving off. And I really, really feel very strongly about this one because as a salon consultant going around um, in and out of salons across North America for a number of years, one of the big things we faced was, you know, the people that were struggling or the owners that were struggling a lot of times they were their own roadblock. Oh, isn't that the truth? And a lot of it just had to do with attitude. Absolutely. And I mean, a shift, you know, yeah. incremental shifts every day could have made such a massive difference. But the thing is, you have to be willing to listen and really be honest with yourself. So that's what we're asking you today is to listen. You may know all of this information, but let me tell you repetition 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 because you may know and you may have heard all of this a hundred times before but one thing may resonate with you today that will cause you to do something differently tomorrow it, you know that's so true because um i think you know certainly in my own life and i'm sure in yours too Catherine, we all have had downward spirals that we have come out of we've done the motivational work we've done all the things that are right you know when you reach that that plateau and you think wow this is great i'm riding i'm riding i'm riding and then all of a sudden you wake up one morning and and there's been a shift or something something yeah. something shifted overnight and you know what we have to work at maintaining that attitude it doesn't you don't just get there and stay there for forever no it's a daily 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 check your attitude at the door yeah so anyway so if you're willing to listen to us if you are check your attitude right now check to make sure you're open and I think that's the biggest thing open to listening because if you're open to listening, there you will find something that will resonate with you that will make a difference in your life. How true is that? And by the way, if um, if you have anything that you would like to add um, in the way of motivation, please you know send us little little hints along the way because we can always use motivational input too. We can absolutely. So here's a great quote, and I really don't know who said it, but I've heard it said many times. Your attitude just determines how successful you will be. Well, you know what? I'm going to claim that for my own. I'm going to say I wrote that. Oh, did you? I, <laughs> I don't think you did. But no, but you okay. know, here, here, do you know, is this not something that we say to to almost every single salon that, that we walk into is, is 
you are. You write your own success and it's it's how you it's it's what you determine. And I have met so many people who technically were so gifted in whatever it was. They were technically brilliant. But I'll tell you, their attitude kept them from being the success that they could be. Because we are our own roadblocks. Remember that. I didn't put a roadblock um, visual in this time. I should have. Yeah, actually, that would have been a, yeah. a, a really good one to have today. I mean, how many times have you pointed somebody in a mirror and say, okay, you want to know where the roadblock in your business is? Check it out. Look in the mirror. Oh, yeah. The first <laughs> the first time I did that to, to someone, I wasn't sure whether they were going to deck me <laughs> or thank me. <laughs> It was that was a bit of a leap of faith on my on my part, taking walking somebody over, an owner of a fairly large business, walking them over to a mirror and standing them in front of the mirror and going, I'd like <laughs> to introduce you to your roadblock. <laughs> anyway, you know, sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes and sometimes it works too. Yeah. Um, well, the great thing about attitude is that um, we can make adjustments on a daily, hourly, minute basis, right? And uh, we really need to think of your mind as a computer. It is a computer. But the nice part is, you know, just like a computer, it can be programmed. So let's get to work. Oh, I thought that said, I get to, get work. to work. Oh, you know, sometimes <laughs> I, I build all my, you know, I build all of these on Kino and then I flip them into yeah. um, <laughs> PowerPoint yeah. um, because it's easier for uh, any meeting to work with PowerPoint. So sometimes you'll have to just, you know, you'll have to forgive me. Sometimes it doesn't translate well. <laughs> but that's one that, that but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start programming. I think that's what we're going to we're going to work on today is changing some of your some of your mindset. So biggest danger that we have, I believe, is negative self-talk. And I think it's something that every single person is guilty of at some point because, um, you know, we often put expectations on ourselves to be something, to do something, whatever it is, uh, create an action, and uh, we don't achieve it. So we end up having such negative self-talk to ourselves. And I think one of the most interesting things about self-talk is that you can change your, you can change your self-talk. It's called cognitive behavioral theory, uh, therapy, and uh, you can make changes that actually adjust your brain patterns. Absolutely. So, I mean, you keep working, working, working on it. And you've heard this before, but I'll tell you, it's so hard to do. It is, Isn't it? It's such work to do that because that little that little man, you know, on the, the negative self-talking guy, he sits on your shoulder every day and he chirps away. Chirp, 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 chirp. And you know what? He talks a heck of a lot more than the positive self-talk guy on the other on the other shoulder. Uh, that's very true. And if you've been on any of our uh, webinars in the past, you'll know that we're absolutely passionate about positive language, uh, taking the, the negatives out of the language we use and, and just talking to other people. So by by changing our, our self-talk, so every time we hear ourselves say a negative word inside our head, we have to almost you almost have to hold up a stop sign. It's almost like a physical thing. You have to think, no, change my way of thinking and yeah. move it around. You know, take, take even the word, but can be negative. You know, think about how can I change the sentence that I'm going to say to myself and turn it into an and instead of a but. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and they do say change your thinking, change your life. You got it. And that truly is, I believe the core of um, what we're talking about today. And it is. Um, in fact, that book, um, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, um, or Change Your Brain, is a very, very powerful book. And if you can pick it up, um, I highly recommend it. it. It it really does make a difference. So here are some great, you know, words that we're, we talk about, you know, creativity, be happy, attitude, positive thinking, successful, peaceful, strength, these are all great words and, and we'll talk about more words as we get through. So today what we're going to talk about are some attitude adjustment strategies. And I mean, I believe it, you just have to take it one day at a time. And sometimes it's, you know, taking it one hour at a time because sometimes an hour of negative thinking can, 
destroy the rest of the day, you know, or the rest of the week. If we don't nip it in the bud and practice attitude adjustment on a regular mm -hmm. basis, we, we can wreck all the good work that we do. That, totally. And that's the one lovely thing about working with Eileen is that we, you know, God knows we are like everyone else out there and we have days where we our thinking is is off and the nice part is we call each other on it exactly and we, we've done it many times and, and I mean there's some days I'm sure she wants to punch me in the nose and vice versa because somebody is calling you on your on your attitude but you know what that really keeps us on track it does because it forces you to rethink how you know the energy that you're you're putting out and it also brings to mind that um, you know, one of the hardest things in your attitude adjustment is other people's attitude, because, you know, when you are working with the public as closely as you do as stylists or estheticians, you are opening yourself up to the attitude of the client. You're opening yourself up to the attitude of the people who work for you. And if you are surrounded by negativity, for some reason or other, the human mind is it's so much easier to go to the negative than it is to the positive. So when you're surrounded by this, you it takes a great deal of inner strength to sort of put up those barriers to protect yourself from that negativity to sort of um, I, I'm not sure how you actually do it because, you know, like we all have our sort of our, our, our inner strengths. Right. But you've got to put up kind of like a netting that's going to stop the negative energy from from being absorbed by yourself. Totally. I call it white light. I surround myself with white light and nothing can get through that white light except what's emanating from me. So, yeah, I like to think I'm rubber. <laughs> just going to let it bounce off me. I'm just going to. And, and often I have to think that, you know, if it's coming from someone else, um, I go back to the four agreements because then I have to remind myself that it's not about me. Um, the negativity is about them. And it's about what they're thinking about themselves. And so often I'll just let it bounce off me and not even not even bother with it because I know that in the end it, it isn't about me. It's it's really about them. So we have to be ducks. We have to let a lot of the negative thinking coming from other people um, just bounce off of us. True. Well said, Eileen. So just a question, is everybody open and ready to listen to some attitude adjustment strategies? Because let me tell you, if you are facing any challenges, I can guarantee that part of the challenges that you're facing are to do with your attitude. Yeah. And so here's a good question for you. Or is, is to do with your attitude. Is to do, that? are to do, oh, what is I don't one of know. them? I'll one check, of those. We'll check, our, we'll, check our, we'll check our grammar at the door too. Um, but here's a really great question for you. Did you, what was your attitude when you got on this call this morning? Like, think about that. Like, where, where were you? Like, do sort of a little bit of a self-assessment right now and think, okay, where, what am I thinking today? What's, what's my attitude? And see if you can put a name to it and then see if you can give a shift before the end of this hour is up. Yeah, because that's really what we're what we're hoping to achieve here is just a, a shift. We're not saying that you you have a horrible attitude. We're just saying that there may be something that you can shift and it can make a huge difference in your business life and, and in your personal life. It does because one spills over to the other. In fact, I am so grateful over the years of I've been to so many incredible motivational um workshops, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've been uh, I've done motivational workshops myself for so many people. And um, every single time you go to one or you present one, it changes your, it shifts your thinking and it reinforces for you how to do things. So um, I, I can never get enough of them. I just, I love them. And there's always a little message inside. Yeah. There's if always you, a little message. I always say, if you take one golden nugget away from anything that you do, any educational event that you do, it was a win. You got it. So here we go. So we're going to talk about these. I'm sure you've heard all about most of what we're going to talk about. But again, it's just listening with different with different ears and trying to catch one thing that could make a difference in your life. That's what we're here to do. Oh, there you go. There we go. Well, the number one thing, of course, is uh, positive affirmations that you um, that you say to yourself every single day. 
And, you know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I belong to quite a few Facebook forums and different things on, and lately there's been a lot of talk on a lot of the business websites that I'm on about affirmations, Mm -hmm. you know, women, men talking about how it's helped them to every day have some form of affirmation. In fact, I, I read something the other day about a woman who was saying that she has three affirmations that she says to herself every morning and, and several times throughout the day, but when she gets up, you know, and basically I am, I am worthy. I deserve to make more money. And there was one other that would went right along with it. But, you know, these are affirmations that you need to make for yourself and the situation where you are in your life mm-hmm. and keep it simple. And how you get started on that is um, really, again, look at where your attitude is in general right now and think about really what it is that you want out of life. Because those are because in a way, affirmations are goals. They're they're really setting in in um, in place goals for your um, mental and emotional um, well-being. And of course, what they do is by saying affirmations over and over again, you help to reprogram your subconscious. That is truly what cognitive therapy is all about. Uh, It's reprogramming your subconscious and it does work. So um, here's a great piece of homework for you to do is to find three things, those three affirmations, just as Catherine suggested that this woman did and find those. Oh. I forgot my iPad. Yeah, oh, yeah. Also acts as a phone. Oh. Sorry, gang. Scared me. <laughs> no kidding. Um, oh my gosh, I completely threw it off. Uh, so, talk about reprogramming my subconscious. <laughs> that really did so it for me. Three affirmations how to get started. Exactly. Okay, so you want to take those three things to get started with. And what you're going to do is write them down and put them somewhere where where you can see them. And when you feel your mind slipping, you're just going to re-say them to yourself on a regular basis. And you will be amazed, absolutely blown away by where it will take you. And one thing I just want to point out, because I've had people say this to me, oh, you know, I feel so stupid doing this. I feel so silly, you know, chanting this to myself. Guess what? Everything you do, you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. And you may not believe it when you start doing this, but the more you do it, then the easier it comes. And then all of a sudden one day you believe it. And that's all about affirmation. That's what affirmations are for because we want your subconscious to believe it. You deserve the best. Um, I've got to share um, um, a wee bit of a personal story with you and I'm going to allow myself to be vulnerable. And uh, but uh, about 20 years ago, I went through um, a major uh, personal, financial, emotional crises and uh, hit rock bottom. And one of the things that really and truly got me out of it was um, post-it notes. I believe in the power of post-it notes and not just the little pieces of paper, but the words written on the post-it notes. And that's exactly what I did is I had three affirmations that I put on my post-it note and I put it in my bathroom uh, mirror so that when I got up in the morning, that was the first thing I saw. And it changed everything for me. You know, it wasn't overnight. But slowly but surely, it helped drag me out of that pit that had um, had swallowed me. And you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps, and you got it. You know, here you are, all these years later, and you've done amazing things in your business life. So you got it. You know, affirmations do work. So they that's do. really what we're trying to get over here. So practice it exactly, and because you know, here's the other thing: is it does send positive responses to your subconscious. Yeah. And I think, you know, if we think about um, chemistry, um, negatives and positives and, you know, how things are attracted to each other, you think about magnets, et cetera, right? The brain responds to positive affirmations far more quickly than it does to negatives. You know, like if you're, when you're saying it over and over Over again. again. So please, first thing, homework, three affirmations, put them somewhere visible. In fact, you know, put them a few places. Yeah. I know for a long time, Eileen, you used to keep um, uh, post-it notes in your cars. Yeah. 
in your car so yeah. that you were in there too so every day you and you were in and out your car all the time exactly that was my office so yeah. i always had to have something there that uh that would always drive me forward right and it did because um you know as well as i do that dealing with the public can be very very stressful and and we tend to wear other people's negativity so you know if having a positive affirmation when you come out of a business call or whatever changes yeah. everything and it and it can't be wishy-washy no so when we talk about power and conviction i mean eileen's great with you know what words so give us some words eileen for powerful words strength yeah but I, but you can't be, you can't, you can't be wishy-washy. You can't say, oh, I hope. No, no. You know? Because again, we're, we're talking about is and results. So there's no wishing, there's no hoping, right. just wishing. And oh no, like, don't, oh. don't start singing. Uh, they don't work. She's what we singer. want, what we want is the end result. So it's, I am. You said it I earlier. Will. I am worthy. Yeah, I am. I am. I will. Um, I, I deserve. I deserve. Um, but I think I am is one of the most yeah, I am. powerful two words that you can have because it tells the it tells yourself who you are. I am strong. I am powerful. I am a good decision maker. I am worth the money that I make. I deserve you know yeah. it's i deserve to make more money i do yeah me too you got it so really let's talk about what motivates you like what 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 is motivating you to what would motivate you to take action to change for instance you know like is it are you coming from a place of anger are you coming from a place of fear are you coming from a place of poverty yeah <laughs> yeah you know why do i need to change that's you know that's the question like why do i want to change why do i need to change so what is motivating you you need to understand your motivation be behind you know wanting to change something now i i kind of chuckled when i said uh, poverty but to be honest i really believe that poverty in so many ways is an attitude um i believe that the more that um we put out in the universe the more that we get back uh you know and sometimes in talking about these things you know we can get sort of you know um okay i'm going to say it airy fairy but i really believe that those things work there is a power in the universe that 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 gives and takes i mean some people call it karma whatever it is but when you give out you know generosity of attitude and generosity of spirit it comes back to you tenfold so i really believe that having an attitude of poverty and trying to hold everything close to you and not sharing or whatever and not allowing yourself to be vulnerable that's exactly what you end up getting back nothing nothing so you have to really think what propels you to take action to change and what are your basic motives right the the emotions that that come out of that is it is it love anger self-preservation money fear yeah those are those are the biggies but only you can answer that you have to you know really do an honest self-assessment to see where you're coming from um and we do that we do self checkups all the time Eileen. Well, we, we have to you know we we truly do um we're a motivation business yeah. and we want to be able to be an example to others but also we because we share of ourselves we want to make sure that what we're sharing is a positive energy so we we've got to check our attitude at the door that doesn't mean that yeah. we wake up cheerful and happy every single day oh no that does not no so um, but the checking the attitude at the door is an amazing little trick that you have to sort of, you yeah. know, touch wood and say, okay, who am I today? Yeah. And truly we do. We all, we all have a choice, right? You can choose to be miserable or you can choose to do something about it and, and change. I think that that is huge. Well, not, not only is, is it huge, it's actually inspiring because when we get ourselves in a place where it is hard to make, <laughs> to make changes, when we realize is that we do have a choice of where we are, because one of my sayings is you are always exactly where you want to be in this life. True. 
I mean, we can choose an inner dialogue of self-encouragement or self-motivation, or we can choose one that's going to, you know, self-defeat or self-pity. Again, those are all choices. And I think that that's really, really powerful. What attitude are you going to choose today? Um, I think it's, you know, propelled me from being a stylist behind my chair to where I am today. And I've done many things in the industry. And let me tell you, it's not because I was the best stylist behind my chair. My attitude really ha is what has taken me to, to the things that I have done over the years. And I think yours too. For absolutely. You know, you know I, when I think about that uh, period of time when I was in the uh, bottom of the well, and uh, I had to check my attitude at the door of every single business that I walked into, every single salon that I walked into, I had to check my attitude and create a version, a positive version of myself. And, and what I found happened, though, was that by practicing to be happy or pretending to, to be, be happy, happy, I became happy because I was practicing um, the right, the positive moves of where to go. And I, I think that changes everything. And when you recognize that you have power over your attitude, uh, I think that's just absolutely life changing. Totally. So another little bit of homework, find out what, what motivates you, what's driving you, you know, and if it's one of the negative, um, Things we talked emotions. about, emotions like that we talked about, then, you know, I really think you need to um, you need to try and look at what the opposite of that emotion is and change it. Yes. And 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 truly believe that that you do have the power to change. You can be whoever you want to be. That is the most in, incredibly exciting thing that, that I think that human beings have available to them. Totally. And. The next strategy. Oh yeah. I, uh, yeah. I love this strategy because power and visualization. Um, and I will tell you, I had a couple of friends who used to say to me, you know, it doesn't matter what you talk about, you visualize it and it happens. And it doesn't maybe happen right away, but you know, for years and years and years, I lived in the middle of, of Canada, you know, no water anywhere close by, well, a couple hours away. <laughs> But I did say, I am going to live on a beach. I am going to live on a beach. And guess what? You live Today, on a beach? I live on a beach. And I strongly, strongly visualize living on the ocean. And that's, well, I don't literally live on the beach. I do have a house. <laughs> But, but she's uh, in a tent. <laughs> no, no, no. I could have done that. But that wasn't what I chose to do. But. You know, I, I had no idea how I was going to do it, none. But because I was so strong in my belief and my and creating the visual in my head that today I do live in a house on the ocean. And one of the uh, visualization charts and um, boards are something that I've taught in motivational workshops um, for many, many years. And one of the um, projects that we used to get uh, people to do was actually, you know, take 15 minutes out, you know, get a whole whack of magazines and actually pull out pictures of the things that um, or words or just something that, you know, of, of what you want to be, of what you want to achieve, uh, what it is that you want in your life. And one of the best boards I ever saw, though, was actually one of my sister's. And many years ago, she and her husband had split up, and it was a very uh, crushing experience, very emotional experience for her. And what she did was she put together a visualization board, and she hung it actually in her walk-in closet. And I, I didn't know that she had done this. And then about, oh, about two years later, I was walking through her closet to get to her mm -hmm. en suite, and I saw this board, and she had all these great big X's through these pictures. And I said, well, well, what's this all about? And she says, oh, she says, this is my my visualization board and the X's are the things that I have accomplished in the in the two years since I've put up this board, the things that I set out for myself to do that I have accomplished. Amazing. And I I I just love that because because I teach it and I thought, wow, that's it works. Yeah. It works. And we would talk about post-it notes. That's a form of visualization. Right? Because that's your goal setting. Totally. Yeah. My husband is great for, you know, post-it notes and and 
visualizing what he wants to do. And I mean, really, we're le I'm leaving on vacation this week and we're going, he's running an Ironman tri triathlon. He's 61 years old and he just started doing Ironman triathlons. And you know what? I give him credit. He drives me crazy most, most days because he works out for a living. Um, <laughs> however, his drive, his determination, he visualizes, you know, that he is going to finish. He has never once not finished. And, you know, I, it's really interesting because I um, um, had my own fitness business many, many years ago. We won't talk about how many. And what I found about fitness was that it's a great place to learn goal setting. In fact, I would have to say I got my real start in doing motivational work was through fitness because yeah. it's you, when you set a goal for yourself physically and you can see your achievement in it, it's amazing. So all of a sudden you can start to see that, oh my gosh, I reached that goal physically. I wanted to be able to run a mile in so many minutes or whatever. And you reach that, you think, wow, that happened. So now all of a sudden you learn to be able to change your 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 attitude and your visualization over into say your your um intellectual life or your emotional life, and you can see that that these goals are can be reached, right? So the visualization board is yeah. Is such a an incredible tool. Huge tool. Yeah. And, and you know, remember, don't don't just put your big dreams on it. Put things that you're gonna accomplish in the interim. Exactly. Because you know, if it's only big dreams like you put a Ferrari on there or you put like a <laughs> yacht on there, or, you know, like I mean, great. That's what you want to visualize, go for it, right? However, you have to have things that are achievable as right. well. So what's to what's going to so what are the things that are actually going to help you get that Ferrari? Um, so you have to sort of visualize that. So, for example, perhaps you're thinking, all right, well, then I need to to bring in more money or whatever. So perhaps well, on your visualization board, you are going to have pictures of, of masses of people in representing the number of clients that you're right. bringing into your chair. So totally. Right. Yeah. It, so you have to really think, OK, so having all these clients is, is what's going to help me increase my uh, revenues so that eventually I can have that Lamborghini, Ferrari, yep. mansion, whatever it is that you want. Anyway, not a hybrid, you know, and I will say, you know, <laughs> in visualizing living in a house on the ocean, um, I don't have the mansion that was in my pictures in my head, but I have a lovely home comfortable home and i look out on the pacific ocean every day yeah you know and and we have to be real you got it so you know but it can happen and it has happened for me many many times in many things in my life and that's how i do it i have a picture in my head and i work towards the picture in my you head got it. and and speaking of pictures kath here the next slide is uh uh a powerful mo talk yeah Positive internal dialogue. Again, just what we talked about, right? Beware, be aware of the little voice in your head because that little voice sabotages you daily. It does. Daily. I have to check myself so many times. And and Eileen and I will be having conversations, you know, and and she will suggest something. And the first thing I'll, I will come back with is no. And, you know, and then you go, oh, okay, wait, wait, back up. wait a minute, back up the bus. Why no? Exactly. So again, you know, like that's, that's an internal dialogue because it, I thought it before I said it. So you have to back up the bus. You have to be aware of that little voice in your head because that little voice is speaking to you 24 seven, even when you sleep, that voice is still turning around in your head. So that's why it's really important to reprogram what that voice is saying to you. And Here's the, you know, the last one, this little note that you've got down here is as just the third item on the list is probably one of the most important things to remember is please don't compare yourself to others. I have to really rethink that because I, I, you know, I, I rather find another word than don't, but, but truly don't compare yourself to others because guess what? We are never going to match up to anybody else because we aren't anybody else. We're only ourselves. We, we are, you know, I always think that life is like a ski, ski hill. You get out on the mountain and you're skiing down the hill. And you know what? 
there's people on the mountain that are worse skiers than you, and there's people on the mountain who are better skiers than you, and that's what life is all about. Yep, that's so true. As I said, you know, I never felt that I was the best um, stylist behind my chair. I was a good colorist, not the greatest cutter. However, you know, I didn't let that stop me. No, I and, sure had fun on the ski hill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and again, you know, I think you have to look at it and say your attitude. I, I, instead of attitude is everything, I usually say attitude is altitude. Because yes. your all your attitude is going to determine how high you fly, and Got it. and you know that is the truth right there in that sentence. So be very aware of your internal dialogue. It is the saboteur. Exactly, and and if you feel yourself um, slipping, give yourself a shake. Get out that white noise. Get out that netting. Get out the rubber. Put the rubber on the road and let's go. <laughs> And the power of words. Eileen is very big on on language and the power of words. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna pass this on to her because she this is her forte. This is what she loves to do. Well, because I've been in sales for uh, most of my adult life, um, words are so important. And actually, I learned about words while I was teaching fitness all those years ago because um, I would go to fitness classes before I. Um, uh, became a business owner and I would listen to an instructor say things like well don't do this and don't do that and I thought well, well tell me what I how I how I should be doing this move so as I became uh, an instructor and then a performer I found words to tell people how to make the motion positive so I would tell them what it is that they had to do instead of telling them what it is that they shouldn't be doing and what it did was it changed how I taught in the greater world rather than just in the fitness class so for example with my children I found ways to talk to my children that wasn't negative because that's the worst thing you know is um don't do this and don't do that you know like there's there's just so many don'ts out there and it's such a negative negative force so instead it's I find myself always looking for ways to find the positive way to to speak so when my children were teenagers and heading out on you know to party it would be be safe rather than don't drink don't drive don't do all those things it would be be safe make good choices tonight so you know we have to find the ways that we're going to take all the negativity out of our words and turn them into powerful powerful positive statements um even when um you know writing the newsletter i really look at the words that we're putting on paper uh, and try and find the way around the negativity and to present it to you in a positive way so that we're watching the negativity and because we're we're told all the time don't do this don't do that don't 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 yeah so i i i and, hear what you're saying with that and and it's one of the three laws of the minds you can't avoid a don't and and i think you've probably heard us say this is that when your mind sees a negative that's what happens when someone says you know don't trip probably the first thing that happens is we trip it's because we because that's all we hear is trip right yeah. don't trip so that's what we focus on and the last part of this is follow your passion. Oh, you know yes. what you're passionate about, passionate about, you will definitely, you don't even really need to think about it. If you're passionate about it, your passion shines through. It does, doesn't it? So follow, find what you're passionate about and do it. That's what we do. It's every single day. We're passionate about sharing and educating and helping. You got it. And that's why we're here. And that's why we do this. Yeah. And actually, you know, um, I think in a way, Vigaro is also as a business is a really good example of, of finding a passion and sharing it because uh, we've certainly found that, you know, um, you know, Fred and the powers that be at Vigaro are, you know, have become passionate about the beauty industry, industry yeah. because they they were, you know, these these are technical people, right? They became passionate about the beauty industry and found um, this way to make the beauty industry better. And I just love that. Well, I just, they're passionate like, about helping. Exactly. Helping you to do your job. And they're always coming bigger, up with better, new easier, ideas. You know? and, and they've done that by 
by driving their passion, yep. by looking into the yep. industry, finding out what drives it, what makes it work, and how to make that easier and better and more effective for the industry. Yep. And if there's parts of what you do that you don't like, don't do it. Yep. You know, just concentrate on what you're really passionate about and, and be the expert in that, you know, go with that. That's really what I see and what, I, what I've always done. So moving right along, positive greetings. There you go again, Miss uh, <laughs> Miss Language. Well, yeah, well, you know, this is one of my pet peeves, probably from having gone through the teenager stage with children. You know, how are you today? Fine, good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's never, <laughs> never great. And it, you know what? And I really, what it really is bothers me is when I say to somebody, great, how are you today? I'm okay. Yeah, and that and downward. And yeah, down. and that, to me, that's like, oh, my God, now where do we go from here? You know, yeah. And in fact, it was interesting because, again, on Facebook the other day, I was looking at one of my consultant friends had written on there and saying that they met somebody. And when they said, hi, how are you today? And, and this person answered with, I'm blessed. Thank you. Yeah, how lovely. And she was so blown away. She said, it made me stop in my tracks and think, oh, my God, we are. We're blessed. We're blessed to be here. There's so many people that would love to be present on, you know, without health problems or anything else. If you're walking around and greeting people, you are blessed. And I think it is, you know, it, it's a phrase, you know, how are you today? It's it's almost like we, we don't even really pay attention. It's just sort of the, you know, that human acknowledgement, right? But it sets the tone. But it does, exactly, right? So if you think about it, and if you can change your attitude just in your greetings, so that when someone says to you, because if, in our business, you think about how many people will say to you, how are you today? And you start thinking about how you're going to answer that. I am fantastic today. Thank you so much for asking. How are you? You know, yeah, and, and I've got a couple of, uh, of my, uh, of my uh, uh, salon customers who answer the phone. It's a great day at XYZ. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, I love that. It that makes sets me, the tone and yeah. it's hard not to feel lifted when you hear something really positive. Exactly. So, you know, if we do nothing else, let's change our greetings to. And see where that takes and us. And see where it takes us. Right? Yeah. There you go. How are you going to answer that? Oh, somebody, Denise said, better to ask, how is it going? Or say, good morning or good afternoon. Yeah, yeah. good yeah, morning, yeah. good afternoon, whatever. But, you know, follow it with, like, enthusiasm. Well, and I think in some ways, you know, Denise, you're so right in our business because, you know, what if the person does tell you how they really are doing today? Oh, I'm really shitty today. <laughs> well, you know, you know how I would say that? I'd say... Okay, then let's see how we can set about changing that. Yeah. Come on, come on in. Give me a challenge. Oh, I'm up for it. Yeah. So, like, enthusiasm. Yeah, okay. There you go. We were a bit enthusiastic. And you guess what? It can be contagious. It can. So, that's why if you can, you can cut, change somebody's mindset in an instant, honestly, by the way you react to them and the, your response to them. So, if they're really down and you come back with a really enthusiastic, response it, it's really hard for them to stay down because it's it's it, it's a battle of wills they're either going to pull you down to their level or you're going to pull them up to yours yeah guess what i'm always going to try and pull them up to mine exactly and because we are open to uh people's energy when they're sitting in the, in our chairs we've got to be very cognizant of the uh effect that they have on us so if we mm. can instead lift them up rather than them pull us down hey imagine that you know talk about an exceptional guest experience that you're creating for that person because they'll leave there walking on <laughs> air thinking wow that was fantastic remember it's not about how they felt walking in your door it's how they feel when they leave you got it and that is if you have the power to change that in someone, you are going to have more clients than you know what to do with because that's what people want. They want they want to feel good about it and that you're going to do that with your attitude. And that actually brings me to probably one of my one of the most powerful sayings in business and that's uh, people will not remember what you do for them and they won't remember what you say to them, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And that's and that, powerful. That is the truth. 
So, yeah, so enthusiasm, it communicates desire, determination, and spirit, all of those things you have in spades, and it's empowering and, and it's attractive. You, you know, know, and do we want to empower people and do we want to be attractive to people? Well, you know, because, you know, you think about when you're positive, you tend to, your face lightens. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're negative, your face droops. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to have to smile all the time then. Smile in the world yeah. smiles with you. Not okay. getting any younger, so those wrinkles, you know, the gravity. Turn your frown yeah. upside down. The gravity is starting to work its magic, but I'm trying to stave it off. So I'm going to start walking on my hands. I'm going to be even more enthusiastic than, than I normally am. Alrighty, lighten up. Lighten humor, up, baby. humor, humor. And laughter is definitely the best medicine. Don't take yourself too seriously. It's so true. In fact, years and years and years ago, a doctor wrote a book called Laughter is the Best Medicine. And this physician was um, diagnosed with a, uh, I think it was a terminal illness. It's been many years since I've read the book, but uh, he decided that he was going to uh, prove the point that positivity could make a difference in disease. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It did. It changed his life. Yeah, it did, did, it can, and it does. You got it. So laughter is the best medicine. It also allows us not to take ourselves quite so seriously. I, like I love to, I love self-deprecating humor, right? You know, yes, I get, yes, I get such a kick out of it. <laughs> but here, I do want to make one caution on that, though, is because if you say something, what you think is humorous about yourself, it can sometimes become a self-fulfilling prophecy. prophecy. Yes, I know you talk about this all the time. Uh, it's true because one of my uh, separating comments has always been, as I've gotten older, I've put on a little bit of weight. I like to say, well, I'm still dangerous from the neck up and the knees down. <laughs> but of course, what has happened is in between the neck and the knees, I've gained a little weight. So... <laughs> So I have had to have to eliminate the self-deprecating piece from my from my repertoire and change it into something else. Yeah, because, because guess what? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. prophecy. <laughs> Absolutely. So smile a lot. I, I mean, sometimes you really have to dig deep for a smile. But when you're working with the public, really, they are paying you, paying you to to have a great attitude. You know, they're not paying you to find out about your problems. And I see that we see this so many times when we go into salons. Um, please think about a smile. A smile changes everything. I know, and you know, it's so often we'll see a distracted stylist coming towards us, you know, not, not thinking about um, the demeanor that they're presenting to the world. And, you know, I always want to go over and hug them and say, you know, it's oh, it's okay, right? It, it's going to be all right. Can, can you move that little thing so we can see what Denise said? Because that looks... Yeah, just one sec. Yeah, because Denise, I, I can see part of what... There you are. It's difficult to accept that how we judge ourselves is what will reflect in opinions of others about us. Disney Linda at the door. I love that. Well, and it, it really is difficult to accept you know that about but it's so true because we judge ourselves all the time like we're so judgmental not just about ourselves but about, about other, other people. people you know so we have to to really accept ourselves to and put it out there so when you say Disneyland at the door can you explain a little bit more about that? Because it could be, it, I could take that two ways. Okay, well, the way I interpreted it, yeah, make it happy is that, you know, like, because, you know, Disneyland, when you go to Disneyland, everybody is, greets you with a smile, right? And they, they're, they call it the, you know, the happiest yeah. place on earth. Yeah, right? make it happy. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, uh, okay, I was just, I was just thinking that because I've had this, I've had a few people say to me, you know, when I've, talked and, and we've done this webinar with them is, well, you know, that's not authentic. If I don't feel it, it's not authentic. But I really believe that we have to, if we don't practice this, it never becomes authentic. Yeah. And we need to, we need to practice this. It's like anything else, practice, 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 but yeah. we need to make it happy. That's totally and, what we need. And, the, and there's a difference between being fake and practicing. Yeah. You know, like we're not saying, you know, the, because you can tell when somebody is, Phony. is phony right but if you're you know within each and every one of us 
there is lightness and blessings, no yeah. matter how how dark our lives are. There is still lightness in all of us. And we just have to drag it out. And even if we practice it for a few seconds at a time, believe me, it starts to grow and expand and lighten us up. Yeah. It's it's powerful. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is we're talking about things that we all need to practice on a daily basis. Absolutely. Nobody ever gets there because it's it's human nature, right? Yeah, and 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 as I said earlier, you know, you can get there and not necessarily stay there. Yeah. You have to keep working on it. Yeah, totally. So exercise and self-care. Yeah, got to love yourself first. Shall I sing my love? No, I won't no. Do that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you have to love yourself first, really, because if you don't love yourself first, you can't take care of anybody else around you. That is so true. And uh, uh, fitness is one of the quadrants of uh, when you're assessing your attitude. So you, t if you divide your your sort of your life into four quadrants, you have your exercise and self care in one quadrant. You have your intellectual um, in another uh, quadrant. Uh, you have, say, your career and finance uh, in another quadrant, and you have your emotional spiritual in another quadrant. And you have to take a look at all of them to see where the balance is and to see which area needs to be adjusted. Because sometimes looking at your life can be so overwhelming and you oh, think, totally. oh my gosh, I have to, I have to change this mm -hmm. and this and this. But if we just look at break, break it, it into break it down into bits, it's much easier to um to, to make changes and you're absolutely right exercise creates new brain synapses and brain growth you've got it that's why we all exercise and one of the things that eileen and i have started to do is um we have walking meetings it's very powerful yeah instead of you know you need sometimes just need to get out and have a walk and when you get out and you're exercising in fresh air and it's amazing how it changes your mindset so I think we need to be aware because as business people and as, you know, stylists or estheticians, we tend to, you know, we work on a very regimented uh, schedule. And sometimes we just need to take a break in that schedule and go outside. And here, when you're, you see, when you're walking, you're both heading in the same direction. So you're not necessarily uh, staring at each other. So if you've got um, you know, a contentious issue or whatever, when you're walking together, you're both heading in the same direction. So all of a sudden it becomes very easy to talk about things that, that might have been hard to talk about when you're, when you're face to face. So walking meetings are fantastic. Yeah. And just for yourself, you know, get out and just take a breath. Cause I, I, I think that that often, like I always, I, when I was behind my chair, when I had, you know, 35 staff, um, often I would just need to get myself out. I'd go to the park and I'd go for a walk and then I could go back and then I could, you know, I could deal with or be more effective in, in my day-to-day -day position. So I think that we have to look after ourselves first. And oftentimes with a lot of us, especially women, we definitely tend to put everybody else before ourselves. Yes. So stop that. No more. Be number one. There's the positive way to say that. Be number one. Giving back. I, I I love this this slide, Catherine. I think this is probably one of the most powerful tools in attitude adjustment there is. It is, is giving back. You have to give to receive. You got it. Again, we're talking about that that ebb and flow of life of giving and receiving and breathing in and out. I mean, really think about this. If you breathe out if you don't breathe back in nothing happens but it's an exchange of oxygen for carbon dioxide and we give out carbon dioxide trees take in carbon dioxide and give back oxygen it's this is this life flow and giving back will give you so much it's it's yeah it's unmeasurable yeah. and it doesn't you know it doesn't have to cost cost money you can give of yourself you can volunteer you can you know do something whatever whatever speaks to you you can volunteer some time and do that paying it forward i i love to pay it forward yep you know i mean the industry has been really good to me and and i like to be give back and um eileen and i often do not get paid in fact more often than not we do not get paid for what we do or the the amount of time that we give to people but you know what 
it, it feels good. It feels so good. It too. feels so good to yeah. do that and to share. Yeah. And you know, and here we are. We we believe in teaching others. So I've been in this industry for well over forty years. It has been very good to me. And really, what I love to do is to pass on the things that I've learned. And I know that Eileen comes from the same place. It is. And, you know, teaching others, pass on your gift. It's, it is truly amazing what happens when we share. I think you will be blown away if you've got an assistant beside you and you share a skill of yours with them. Uh, the rewards are, are amazing. So in saying all of that, we kind of sum it all up here. Accept your fears, exercise regularly, be grateful, find happiness somewhere in your daily life, manage your time, don't whine, never whine, or as you would say, you'd find a different way to well, say Well, I, I want to take the H out of that. Oh, yeah. And whine on a regular basis. Why not? <laughs> whine on a regular basis, yes. Have a little bit of wine. Spend time with happy people. This is a big one. It is. Call us on a regular basis, yeah. you guys, because we're so happy. <laughs> <laughs> but look around at the five people you hang out with the most, and that will tell you a lot about where you're at. Oh, that is actually a very, very good idea, yeah. right? Respect others and be patient because Rome wasn't built in a day and nothing happens overnight. Mm -hmm. Just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. You know, what we've just talked about, your attitude. Your attitude is your altitude. You are going to fly high if you can have a great attitude on a daily basis. And actually, Denise just added a great little line. Maybe pick one thing from your chart every month and focus on it. So even if you took this little chart right here yeah. and focused on one thing a month or even one thing a week or whatever and just did that one thing, I think you would be blown away. By what it would bring into your life yeah we just need reminders on yeah. a daily basis post-it notes get those post-it notes get the, Put get them the, where... yeah and get that visualization and if you do like this little chart send us an email which i think is going to come up and we will send you a, a copy of that so you so you've got it as yeah. a little reminder to be happy so you can print it out and uh have that visual reminder we are visual people we need visuals you got so it. that's what i say well, and we are the uh, www.theprofitablesalonowner.com. Uh, we do put out a weekly newsletter. If you're not already signed up, get on board, get on the website and sign yourself up because we come out every Monday morning and, and it's at no charge. It's our way of giving back, right? It's a no charge um, newsletter. Yes, that Free. we, we Free. send out. And we would love to hear from you at any time at info at the profitable salon owner dot com. And we hope everyone on the call took at least one gold nugget from this call and will affect change in your life. You got it. Thanks so much and thank you for thank you for thanking us. <laughs> <laughs> Take care everyone. Have a great day. Now, oh next month. If you have an opportunity to come on board our webinar, we are going to do a webinar on um, uh, uh, chair renting when your competition, how to succeed when your competition is standing right next door to you or standing right beside you. So hope you're going to join us next month. We'll see you then. Bye now.